detailed study of the essay on the rule of the road. So here as I have already mentioned in the introduction or in the summary of this uh, essay, uh, we can see that there is a small uh, anecdote of a lady, an old lady, her experience uh, that is we can see in there that opening paragraph itself this particular event. Okay. The stout old lady was walking with her basket down the middle of a street in Petrograd to the great confusion of the traffic and with no small peril to herself. That is, it is dangerous for both herself and others as well. It was pointed out to her that the pavement, the path, uh, uh, a footpath, was the place for the foot passengers. But she replied, I am going to walk wherever I like. We have got liberty now. It's after like... Uh, after uh, getting the that freedom uh, for Russians, this Petrograd is a Russian city that is St. Petersburg, now St. Petersburg. It did not occur to the dear old lady that if liberty entitled the food passengers to walk down the middle of the road, it also entitled the cab driver to drive on the pavement and that the end of such liberty would be universal chaos. Every, everybody would be getting in everybody else way and nobody would get anywhere. Individual liberty would have become social anarchy. So the uh, concept of individual liberty could excessive individual liberty could result in social anarchy. It's because if we won't curtail our own liberty, it's going to harm, uh, we are going to invade others space. That is the thing. Now here, there is a danger of the world getting liberty drunk. Liberty drunk means excessive uh, uh, amount of liberty. People are very, uh, they are enjoying, they, they demand more liberty for themselves. Okay. So, liberty drunk in these days like the old lady with the basket. And it is just as well to remind ourselves of what the rule of the road means. Rule of the road is a kind of metaphor used by this author to con con convey his uh, idea or his concepts related to the concept of personal liberty. It means that in order that the liberties of all may be preserved, the liberties of everybody must be curtailed. We should control the level or the, uh, the scope or boundary of our liberty in order to preserve others' liberty as well. When the policeman, say at Piccadilly Circus, steps into the middle of the road and puts up his hand, he is a symbol of not of tyranny but of liberty. Piccadilly Circus is a junction in London. Okay. And you may feel, you may, may not think so. You may be in a hurry and seeing your motor car pulled up by this insolence of office, feel that your liberty has been outraged. How dare this fellow interfere with your free use of the public highway? Then, if you are a reasonable person, you will reflect that if he did not incidentally interfere with you, he would interfere with no one and the result would be that Piccadilly Circus would be a maelstrom that you would never cross at all. Okay, so here at all and have submitted to a curtailment of private liberty in order that you may enjoy a social order which makes your liberty a reality. So he says that we should have an no order. We should... Uh, we should consider others freedom as well whenever we consider we when we, we demand or whenever we uh, 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 ask for our own freedom it is better it is it should be it is it is a civilized thing to consider others liberty as well for example he says that see there is a policeman who controls that there is a traffic police who controls the traffic at Piccadilly circus and if he doesn't do his work Nobody is going to reach anywhere. That is the thing. Okay. Now he goes on. Liberty is not a personal affair only, but a social contract. So according to Gardiner, he says that liberty is something that is beyond personal. It is a social contract. It is an accommodation of interest in matters which do not touch anybody else's liberty. Of course, I may be as free as I like if I choose to go down the strand in a dressing gown with long hair and bare foot. Who shall say, Mina? You have liberty to laugh at me, but I have liberty to be indifferent to you. See, 
it is okay that uh, yeah, I have my own liberty I can dress up in what in whatever attire I like to and I can do whatever I like to but the thing is that see I shouldn't interfere someone else liberty as long as I don't do that then there is no issues so he's, he continues and says that and if I have a fancy for dyeing my hair or waxing my moustache which heaven forbid or wearing a tall hat a frock coat and sandals kind fan, fancy kind of da, uh, dressing or going to bed late or getting up early i shall follow my fancy and ask no man's permission because it is my liberty i shall not inquire of you whether i may eat is eat mustard with my mutton i may like mustard with my mutton and you and you will not ask me whether you may be a protestant or a catholic like religious preferences whether you may marry the dark lady or the fair lady like you can marry whoever you like whoever you like to marry whether you may prefer ella wheeler wilcox to wood uh, wordsworth or champagne to shandy guff so here ella wheeler uh, wilcox is a, an american poet okay wordsworth is a british poet so you can prefer you can uh, decide uh, whatever you like to read you can uh, select your favorite or that it doesn't matter Okay, nobody is going to ask you because it's your liberty. Yes, everything is all right. In all these and a thousand other details, you and I please ourselves and ask no one's leave. Nobody is going to ask anybody's permission. We have a whole kingdom in which we rule alone, can do whatever we choose, be wise or ridiculous, harsh or easy, conventional or old, whatever. It could be traditional, it could be conventional or it could be something new gen. Nobody is going to get into anybody's way but the thing is that but directly we step out of that kingdom that personal space that is the kingdom mentioned by him okay but directly when we step out of that kingdom our personal liberty of action becomes qualified by other pers people's liberty i might i might like to practice on my trombone from midnight till three in the morning so it is a you know very harsh kind of musical instrument uh, i'll show the picture later if i went on to the top of helvin to do helvin is a mountain okay it's a uh, it's a very tall mountain in the lake district to do it i could please myself but if i do it in my bedroom my family will object and if i do it out in the streets the neighbors will remind me that my liberty to blow the trombone must not interfere with their liberty to sleep in quiet. There are a lot of people in the world and I have to accommodate my liberty to their liberties. So he says that if you want to practice some musical instruments like trombone, you can go ahead and do it uh, somewhere remote. You should interfere with other space. You shouldn't interfere with, uh, you shouldn't interfere with others personal liberty. That is the thing how we do we should that is the way how we should do the things we all are liable to forget this and unfortunately we are much more conscious of the imperfections of others in this um i can't read it and this reason than of our i think so so basically the thing is that he says that we are always conscious about others mistakes we are not considered right or we, are, we won't consider ourselves uh, our mistakes that is the problem now he goes on that is he is going to explain one of his experience where he felt that his liberty was violated by someone else i got into a railway carriage at a country station the other morning and settled down for what the school boys would call an hour's work at a blue book so he just wanted to uh, you know engage himself the, so he saw a blue book there is a blue book and he this blue book is a and a uh, statistical record of this uh, business related things uh, in britain so he wanted to read that okay and he got into the uh, railway carriage of course that, that is a personal space and he is going to read the blue book i was not reading it for pleasure the truth is that i never do read blue uh, blue books for pleasure pleasure because it's not something it's not uh, it, it is not something that we do for pleasure this blue book is not something to entertain a person. It is to inform uh, some things related to the accounts or uh, business, etc. I read them as a barrister reads a brief for the very humble purpose of turning an honest penny out of them. So, he wanted to make 
uh, some savings or some kind of money because this thing is related to money this book blue book now if you are reading a book for pleasure it doesn't matter what is going on around you because like I think I could enjoy Tristram Shanty or Treasure Island in the midst of an earthquake because these books are not for informative purpose these books are for pleasure you can read uh, this uh, Treasure Island or Tristram Shanty anywhere and so he thinks that he could uh, read these kind of books even if it is in um, in the middle of an earthquake but what about the blue book blue book needs some kind of concentration but when you are reading a thing as a task you need reason, uh, reason, uh, reasonable quiet and that is what I didn't get for at the next station in came a couple of men one of whom talked to his friends for the rest of the journey in a loud pompous voice he was one of those people who remind one of that story of Homtuk. Homtuk is a person who meet a person of immense swagger in the street, uh, stopped him and said, Excuse me, sir, but are you someone in particular? So this gentleman was someone in particular. Just like Homtuk's, uh, uh, Homtuk, he questioned a person with a, uh, who was very proud. So uh, just like this, he also felt that he should ask this man that kind of question because this man is talking like he is everything, he is someone. As I wrestled with closes and sections in the blue book, his voice rose like a gale, like a, you know, a, a whirlwind, a, a kind of um, wind, okay. And his family history, the deeds of his sons in the war and his criticism of the generals and the politicians submerged my poor attempts to hang on to my job. So, this man's talking, this man talks loud and everyone are disturbed especially the author he is trying to read a book the blue book and what he did was that he just shut this book up i shut up the blue book looked out of the window and listened wearingly while the voice thundered on with themes had you know the sort of the so themes like this now what french ought to have done the mistake the germans made if only ashkid had Ashkut is a Ashkut is a prime minister. Okay, uh, then prime minister, UK's prime minister. You know the sort of stuff like just general talking. Uh, whenever we uh, we we are talking with someone in a group, we would talk about lots of uh, common stuff. Just like that, this man is talking in a very loud voice. So basically, he the other is not interested to listen this, but this thing is forced forced upon the author. You know the sort of stuff. I had heard it all before, oh so often. It was like a barrel organ groaning out some banal song of long echo. So this is a kind of uh, embarrassing moment for the author because he he has he he was intended to he he wanted to read this blue book, but unfortunately this man who interferes uh, the everyone everyone else piece in that particular string carriage carriage and then. This man is talking, this man is continuously talking, ruining everyone's time, everyone's space. So this is a clear, you know, invasion of someone else's liberty. If I had asked him to be good enough to talk in a lower tone, I dare say he would have thought I was a very rude fellow. It did not occur to him that anybody could have anything better to do than to listen to him. And I have no doubt he left the carriage convinced that everybody in it had, thanks to him, had a very illuminating journey and would carry away a pleasing impression of his encyclopedic range. He was obviously a well-intentioned person. It's a kind, of, yeah, a kind of sarcasm here. The thing that was wrong with him was that he had not the social sense. He lacked social sense. He never understood that the, this, he is clearly disturbing other people. He is doing a, an antisocial thing. So, he was not a clubbable man. To, uh, see, we know that uh, the people share clubs. Uh, people, people go to a club and then uh, they uh, have lots of uh, great moments in the club where people are mingling socially and it's a very good space, social space. So, he says that this man, that is the author says that this man, the traveler, Will, is not going to be a clubbable man. He is not a person with social sense. 
A reasonable consideration for the rights or feelings of others is the foundation of social contact. To have a good social contact, a, a man or a woman should have what uh, should have this quality that is a reasonable consideration for the rights or feelings of others that is the that is a must thing that is the foundation of a social contact for a person to be a socially uh, uh, well equipped person a man or a woman should possess this quality should be considerate towards others it is commonly alleged against women that in this respect, they are less civilized than men. So here, uh, the author goes on. He says that women are way far, you know, worse than men when it comes to this. And I am bound to confess that it that in my experience, it is the woman, the well-dressed woman, who trusted trusted herself in front of you at the ticket office. So it may be his experience. The man would not attempt it. Partly because he knows the thing would not be tolerated from him, but also because he has been better drilled in the small give and take of social relationships. He has lived more in broad current of the world, where you have to learn to accommodate yourself to the general standard of contact, and his school life, his club life, and his games have in this respect given him uh, uh, Sorry, this I can't read this something is here. Just a moment. Okay. Oh. Please wait. Then of your something is there. I can't read it uh, because of this uh, thing. So the thing is that um let me okay. Ah, whatever yeah, uh, that you can read later. So the thing is that he says that this woman and that is uh, women uh, basically have this uh, tendency to uh, crash land on others. Maybe maybe they have the tendency to interfere in the social space of others. The reason the reason is that she may, uh, these women uh, they may not be able to go to school so they may not have the uh, the drill or practice to mingle with others how to behave in a social group maybe because of that reason men are better than women when it comes to social contact that is the point of view of the of this author okay now i believe that the rights of small people and quiet people are as important to preserve as the rights of small nationalities when I hear the aggressive bullying horn with some motorists deliberately used, I confess that I feel something boiling up in me, which is very like what I felt when Germany came trampling like a bully over Belgium. So we know that we experience it in our everyday life. No, that is these uh, that bullets and that kind of motorbikes that makes a lot of a loud noise, t -t 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 sound. Then then we know that it is very disturbing for everyone else. Basically, if you have a if you have small babies or someone else in your home, it is a very disturbing. The same thing happens back in uh, Britain as well. So that is the reason why he says that he is very uh, angry or he is very irritated whenever he hears this uh, sound of uh, this bullying horn of this motor motorist, and it's just like he compares that mental state, his mental state with that he had when Germany came traveling like a bully over Belgium. So it was a, a invasion that is German invasion over Belgium and so he was very angry during that time just like that he feel the same thing when whenever he hears this bullying horn. By what right my dear sir do you go along our highways uttering that hideous curse on all who impede your path? Cannot you announce your coming like a gentleman? Cannot you take your turn? Are you someone in particular or are you simply a hot gospeller? Of the prophet Nietzsche, I find myself wondering what sort of a person it is who can sit behind that hog like outrage without realizing that he is the spirit of Prussia incarnate and a very ugly spectacle in a civilized world. So, he basically, um, you know, scolds uh, that person that is, uh, these motor motorists who makes lots of noise. And there is a more harmless person who has bought a very uh, blatant gramophone and on Sunday afternoon sets the thing going, opens the window and fills the, fills the street with 
keep the home fires burning or some similar banality what are the right limits of social behavior in a matter of this sort let us take the trombone as an illustration again hazlitt say, said that a man who wanted to learn that fearsome instrument was entitled to learn it in his own house even though he was a nuisance to his neighbors but it was his business to make the nuisance as slight as possible he must practice it in the attic and shut the window so here the thing is that uh, he again uh, he says uh, talks um, brings up another example that is a person who bought a gramophone it's a musical music player and uh, we know that uh, that there is an old type of music player and he uh, usually plays this song keep the home fires burning all the time uh, it is a very annoying uh, loud noise and he is actually disturbing others so here again uh, now the uh, now the author says that william has it another says he said he called trombone as a fearsome instrument and it, it has a very loud noise okay very kind of disturbing loud noise and he says that if anybody wanted to practice this wants to practice this trombone better you practice it in the attic that is the upper part of that upper story of that of a house where you can shut the window and practice it there he had no right to sit in front room open the window and blow his nose into his neighbor's ears with the maximum of violence and so with the gramophone if you like the gramophone you are entitled to have it but you are interfering with the liberties of your neighbors if you don't do what you can to limit the noise to your own household your neighbors may not like keep the home fires burning they may prefer to have their sunday afternoon undisturbed and it is as great and Uh, impertinence for you to willfully trespass on their peace as it would be to go unasked into their gardens and trample on their flower beds so basically you should if you are interested in your um, um, hobbies if you want to listen to music do it do it as much as you like but the thing is that you shouldn't interfere into the spaces of others you shouldn't um, uh, you know invade the spaces of others you shouldn't disturb others that is the thing you must uh, do now he says that there are cases of course where the clash of liberty seem to defy compromise that is like there are some unusual cases my dear old friend x who lives in a west end square and who is an amazed mixture of good nature and irascibility flies into a passion when he hears a street piano and rushes out to order it away he doesn't like this dear old friend he is a very good man but the thing is that he doesn't like it but nearby lives a distinguished lady of romantic picaresque taste who dots on street pianos and attracts them as wasps are attracted to a jar of jam so this lady really likes uh, this street pianos and the other man he doesn't like it so whose liberty in this case should surrender to the other for the life of me i cannot say so here the same thing is even so there are street pianos and the players are playing that so some people that this both neighbors uh, both of them are neighbors they are staying uh, you know adjunct uh, in adjunct houses the thing is that one person doesn't like it and the lady likes it so basically here whose liberty should be you know should be conserved that is the thing so that is the reason why he says that where the clash of liberty seems seems to defy compromise okay now <clears throat> for the life of me i cannot say whose liberty should be compromised both of them have equal right to have this thing that is to avoid something and to uh, to enjoy something it is a ris- reasonable to street uh, to like street pianos as to dislike them and vice versa i would give much to hear uh, sancho panza panza solution of such a nice riddle sancho sancho panza is uh, is a person uh, it's a character from don quixote uh, by cervantes and he is a, uh, he says lots of riddles he uh, he is a very interesting character okay uh, sancho panza 
and I suppose the fact is that we can be neither complete anarchist nor complete socialist in this complex world. It is not possible to be a complete anarchist nor complete socialist or rather we must be a judicious mixture of both. We have both liberties to preserve our individual liberty and our social liberty. So there are two types of liberty. The one is our individual liberty and the next one is social liberty. We must watch the bureaucrat on the one side and warn of the anarchist on the other. I am neither a Marxist nor a Tolstoyan but a compromise. I shall not permit, see he says that these are different ideologies, Marxist ideologies and Tolstoy, uh, Tolstoyan ideologies, Marxist. Karl Marx ideology and Tolstoy's ideology basically these are two different um, you know ends of ideologies basically but a compromise. I shall not permit any other authority to say that my child must go to this school or that shall specialize in science or arts or shall play rugger or soccer. He can do whatever he like to do rugger or he could play uh, can be a player, a, a rugby player or a, a football player. It's up to him. I don't really care. I don't really uh, expect or I don't really uh, mind. Uh, I really mind if anybody interfere in these kind of things. I don't really care uh, the opinions of others with respect to these kind of things. But these things are personal. That is the reason. But if I proceed to say that my child shall have no education at all, that he shall be brought up as a, uh, uh, as a, a, a primeval savage and a very stern objection to pickpockets and that my child must have a certain minimum of education whether I like it or not. I cannot have the liberty to, sorry, uh, I think I just missed this sentence, yes. But if I proceed to say that my child have no education at all, that he shall be brought up as a, a uh, primeval savage that is a you know a very old type of a person or a savage uh, a criminal or at mr fagin's fagin uh, is a character from um, you know that um, uh, that story that is um, novel uh, charles dickens novel uh, 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 i have included it in here i can't remember it let's see uh, that story of that boy that has um, here it is there. Here it is given here. Yes. That is Oliver Twist. In the novel Oliver Twist, there is a character. Okay. We will discuss that specific terms and all these important points that I have included in this uh, notes. Okay. So, first of all, let me complete this. Then society will politely but firmly tell me that it has no use for uh, primeval savages and a very stern objection to pickpockets and that my, chi my child must have a certain minimum of education whether I like it or not. Even though it is my liberty uh, that I can uh, uh, decide, uh, I can decide everything related to my child, I cannot deny the rights of my child and then I cannot um, make, I cannot, uh, 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 you know, uh, I cannot, uh, uh, I cannot do whatever I like with my child. I should take care that this this child should not be a nuisance, or should uh, he or this uh, uh, girl should not be a the boy or girl should shouldn't be a disturbance for the society. I cannot have the liberty to be a nuisance to my neighbors or make my child a burden and a danger to the commonwealth. It is in the small matter of conduct, in the observance of the rule of the road, that we pass judgment upon ourselves and declare that we are civilized or are uncivilized basically says that it is our responsibility we should uh, actually follow the rule of the road rule of the road is not basically uh, he uh, doesn't uh, mention it uh, literally but basically he take he mentions it as a metaphor that is the rule of the road the great moments of heroism and sacrifice are rare it is the little habits of commonplace intercourse that commonplace intercourse that make up the great sum of life and sweeten or make bitter the journey. So we cannot always do some kind of heroism or sacrifice. But what makes our life more sweet, more fruitful is the little habits of considering ourselves and others as well. I hope my friend in the railway carriage will reflect on this, then he will not cease 
he will not stop i am sure to explain to his neighbors where french went wrong and where the germans went ditto but he will do it in a way that will that will permit me to read my blue book undisturbed so he says that once Oh, once a person understands this reality that is a person should ob observe the rule of the road the rule of the road means that that is we should let everyone pass there through their own way we should let all have their own freedom we should consider our freedom and others freedom as uh, as well we should observe our personal liberty and we should observe social liberty then only we can uh, have a very fruitful very calm and quiet life we we should uh, th through that way we can uh, control or we can um, uh, we can uh, control our behavior and we can save the society from the chaos okay so that is the essay now we will see the